My name is Adrian Chun and I'm a product design engineer here at Lin Products. The design of the 360 really began with the loudspeaker cabinet and we were looking to improve the performance of the product by um, eliminating hard baffle edges from the loudspeaker cabinet to improve the dispersion behavior of the loudspeaker. Um, in order to do that, um, we took information from simulations that our acoustic engineers ran to provide us with the optimal radius of curvature around each of the drive units. And we use that to inform this constantly changing radius that runs the, the full length of the loudspeaker cabinet. Um, now, once we'd achieved a design that so, um, um, we were happy with, both in terms of the performance and the aesthetic, one of the biggest challenges came in actually manufacturing this cabinet. Um, this is a, a formed plywood construction. In order to achieve this constantly changing radius of curvature down the length of the front baffle, um, we had to use a new material and new process uh, to create that form because if you used a conventional veneer uh, with a, a conventional forming process, you would end up with, the, uh, with it splitting. Um, so this was very much new ground both for us and our cabinet supplier. Um, and we had to work very closely with them in order to achieve that design. And it, these were new processes um, that were developed in order to, uh, to, to achieve this form in that material. Moving on then from the cabinet itself, um, the other design feature which you'll notice are the array trim and the lower base trims. Now, these serve a functional purpose as well as an aesthetic um, purpose. And I'll start on the functional side. So their, their primary function is to integrate the drive units with the curvature of the loudspeaker cabinet. So um, where necessary, we've incorporated waveguides um, to manage that transition between the drive unit and the surface of the loudspeaker cabinet. Um, and in terms of uh, an aesthetic um, function, the array trim is, is the visual sensor, it's the focal point of the loudspeaker. Um, and there are a couple of features that I'd like to talk about in terms of what's gone into this design. Um, one thing you'll notice are these um, grooved cuts at the top of the array trim. Um, now, they, these echo the detailing of our next generation Climax DSM. Um, and the idea behind this really is that it's a very lively, dynamic surface that draws your eye up to this focal point of the loudspeaker. But it also um, is reminiscent of the grooves on a vinyl record. And that is a nod to our heritage um, in turntable design and manufacture in with respect to the Sondek LP12 turntable on which the company was founded. Moving on then from the, I guess, the styling of the arrays, uh, the array trim, um, in terms of the finish of the cabinets, we wanted to offer something, a range of finishes that would accentuate the form, uh, the new form of these loudspeakers. And we, but not only that, um, we didn't want something that would just, well, I guess we were looking for something that would not only make the speakers look great, um, but we wanted to choose a range of finishes that would um, have a layer of meaning and relevance to Lynn as a company. Um, and that's, that was the, the idea behind the Glasgow collection of finishes. So the Glasgow collection finishes are um, Lynn Heritage, um, Clyde Built, and Single Malt. Now with Lynn Heritage, um, it's a uh, it's it's almost um, a midnight it's it's different um, a midnight blue, um, a very deep dark blue. Now this comes from uh, the color blue um, having always been a part of Lynn's brand identity throughout our history, um, and also the word Lynn itself, meaning the pool at the foot of a waterfall. So we took those two inspirations and came up with this, um, this finish that, that would um, represent those th two things. Um, in terms of the Clyde built finish, um, we really wanted to capture Glasgow's heritage in engineering and manufacturing. Now, the words Clyde built are synonymous with quality and excellence in um, uh, engineering and manufacturing. Uh, and of course, it harks back to um, the days when 
Glasgow had a very proud, very uh, world-class shipbuilding industry. Um, so the colour we chose to represent that um, and, and convey that is a um, was actually inspired by the Finiston Crane, um, which is, uh, is a monument to, to the Clyde's industrial heritage that still stands over the river today. And lastly, with single malt, uh, it kind of speaks for itself really. It was, it was a finish chosen to celebrate our Scottish home um, and uh, to, sort of, to play on the idea of um, um, whiskey and single malts um, being products that are they're very much intrinsically linked to the place where they're made. And it's to try and capture something, um, uh, um, the correlation there between that and, and Lynn and, and the fact that we design, manufacture our products here. Um, so the finish itself, um, we wanted to achieve something that was dynamic and lively and, and captured the, the, um, the character um, of whiskey. Uh, and, and that's really what went into informing the, the design of the single malt finish. I'm very proud of the 360 loudspeaker. From an aesthetic point of view, I think it's, we managed to take those, um, I've managed to take those, those functional requirements and create a form that is both visually pleasing and fulfills the requirements of delivering a high performance loudspeaker. Um, so in terms of marrying those two things together, I'm delighted with the way it's turned out. The other thing is that the 360 comes on the heels of the um, 350 loudspeaker, which is a much loved product that had been in the marketplace for a very long time and had a very distinctive visual identity. Um, and we worked very hard to um, create something new, but that was still, that still maintained a link to that, uh, to the, to that heritage in the, in the past, to retain the, the characteristics um, and the, the lineage of our, loud, our previous generation loudspeaker. So I'm very proud of what we've managed to achieve with the 360. So hello, my name is Phil Budd. I'm the head of the acoustics and mechanical team here at Lynn through an R&D. Uh, but my principal role in the company is, is loudspeaker design. Um, and today I'm going to be telling you about the key technologies in our new 360 loudspeaker, um, which I know you'll all get to hear at some point and I'm sure you'll enjoy. So we've had a long held vision at Lynn to create an audibly invisible loudspeaker, a speaker which has no character or color, um, it just presents the music. So to do this, there's two areas we need to really focus on. We have to drive down distortion wherever possible. So from the drive units, from the electronics, and from the cabinet itself. Um, but also, when you listen to a recording, you only want to hear the sound stage that's captured by the recording. So we need to design the loudspeaker to play within a room without you hearing the room. And only then can you really be free of the, the, the impression of listening to a, a hi-fi system, a stereo pair of speakers. So, um, about 10 years ago, we introduced uh, Exact and Space Optimization, and these two technologies together are a, a key step um, and a big step towards achieving this vision. And they're still very fundamental to, to our design approach for loudspeakers at Lynn. So Space Optimization took back control from the room, uh, the low frequencies, and allowed you to hear so much more of the music and so much less of the room. Uh, exact treated the one major form of distortion that active speakers never dealt with, and that's the inherent time distortion, the, the phase uh, response of an analog loudspeaker, be it active or passive. So the phase response of the drive units, of the crossover, of, of the, the actual distance from the drive units to the listening position. Exact really broke new ground for loudspeakers. Um, it allows us to reproduce with unprecedented accuracy the tonality and position of every note and every voice in, in the music. So as I said, these two technologies were a big step forward for us towards our, our vision, but we still knew that we could do more. So um, let's talk about uh, distortion and how we've driven that down in the 360. Um, first and foremost, we have a full new suite of drive units. Um, our target with these drive units was to push all diaphragm resonance out of band. Um, Previously, we used a lot of soft uh, materials for the cones and domes uh, to kind of mitigate that distortion. Uh, but we kind of knew we could do a bit better, um, but we were always held back by the tweeter. 
So about four or five years ago now, we tooled up uh, our new beryllium tweeter, which we use in this loudspeaker. Um, we already loved the way that beryllium performed, but all the tweeters out there were just too big. Uh, they were one inch or bigger. Um, and what we find is that dispersion characteristic just narrows down and it starts to beam too much. So we tooled up this smaller 19 millimeter beryllium tweeter. Um, the dispersion is, is great, it stays really open. Um, distortion, to be honest, I can't even measure it. Uh, my measurement system uh, stops out at 48 kilohertz. The resonance is somewhere up above that, so it's, it's well beyond the range of, of human hearing. It really is truly a, a remarkably open and transparent tweeter. So then the challenge came of how do we design a mid-range to match this kind of performance. So we went to material science and, and what can we do to push resonance again of a, a larger form dome out of band. Uh, we actually use a, a thin ply woven carbon fibre, so it's a pretty high tech material originally developed for use in NASA's Mars rover. But it combines the perfect balance of lightness, of stiffness and the, the structural strength required for such a large form of dome. Um, again, resonance on that unit is pushed almost three octaves above the range that we use it. So again, it's perfectly clean in its operating band. Both the upper base and lower base units use uh, an aluminium alloy um, and it was chosen to, to have just the right kind of balance of stiffness again to make sure that the units operate as pistons um, throughout their operating band. So again, they're, they're adding nothing, no colour, no distortion to the, to the sound that they produce. The two low base units, um, it's worth mentioning because they're, they're pretty special in terms of their capabilities. Um, the excursion of these units is, is huge. It's the linear range is greater than the maximum range we achieved before, and the maximum excursion is more than double what we've achieved before. So although they're the same nominal diameter as what we used on the predecessor, um, they're capable of more than double the output. So it's almost like having four subwoofers built into the speaker. The extension really is astonishing. So really for distortion in the drive units, we've hit material science and tried to push the envelope of what we could do there. Um, but also uh, we need to talk about the electronics. This is an active speaker. So all of the electronics that drives the speak, uh, each of the drive units in here is, is built into the, into the module on the back. It's quite easy to design an active speaker where you just take some amplifier technologies that already exist and you put them in and you go, good, we now have an active speaker. One of our key strengths at Lynn is integration and bringing together acoustics, mechanical engineering, electronic engineering, software engineering, cloud engineering, all of these things together and packaging it into to one brilliant product. So we kind of knew we could do more than just taking some existing amplifier platforms. So we pushed the boat out and we designed two completely new technologies for this loudspeaker. So starting with the base, we have uh, a new uh, all digital uh, power DAC, as we call it. So this pushes the lossless digital signal path as close as possible to the drive unit, closer than we've ever got before. Um, the power DAC takes a direct digital feed from our exact engine. At the front end of there, we have an FPGA which converts and does the demodulation into PWM, which then feeds into the power stage. So that's the pushing digital right up to those last transistors before the, the drive unit. Um, but we then also sample the output of those uh, transistors and feed that back into the FPGA for a digital control loop. This gives us some pretty unique uh, benefits over conventional amplifier design. Um, essentially, by the time we've filtered out any high frequency noise from the Class D stage and then put this feedback loop in place, the only noise that we're left with is the effectively the, the, the noise level of the ADC that we sample the output with, which is incredibly low. Um, so, you know, if we could find a perfect ADC, we would have a perfect amplifier for the base system. The other key benefit really over traditional designs, normally you have a noise floor and your signal level, and as you push the signal up, the noise floor rises with it. Um, here we're setting the noise floor in the digital domain, so it remains fixed. So as you push the volume up, your noise floor gets lower and lower relative to it. So the amp actually gets cleaner the harder you drive it. It's 
massively efficient. It's, uh, you know, it's based around a Class D design, so it's really efficient. It's got a fantastic grip on the base units, and it's, it's got a huge power delivery capability. So it's the perfect platform. And you combine that with these really, really high excursion, ultra linear base units, and you've just got ridiculous base. I mean, it's, it's base that will really move you. Um, so we're, we're really proud of that, and again, it's all about driving down distortion, so we're probably about 10 dB on average, better than we used to be in terms of the electronics in there. As we move up to the high frequency range, to the 360 array, we invented uh, a new class of AB amplifier, which we call adaptive bias control. So the bias in an amplifier is used to um, effectively keep the, the output transistors awake. So as the signal passes through zero, you don't get any noise as you switch from one transistor to another. Um, it's known as crossover distortion in, in uh, amplifier design. Now, the crossover distortion depends on a couple of things. Uh, temperature of the devices, so it depends how loud you're playing. Um, also on the, the, uh, the frequency of the sound, so how quickly it's passing through that zero point. Um, but also no two transistors are ever quite the same as another two transistors. So there's a number of things that affect the, the, uh, the optimum bias current. So what we do in our system, again, we love FP, FPGAs um, in, in this company. So we uh, sample the current going into and out of those transistors. We feed that into a, a digital control loop. So that's in-house custom designed algorithms that run on FPGA and they optimize the bias current in real time. So the amplifier is always sitting at the perfect optimum low distortion level for the signal coming through, for the volume it's being played at for every condition. Now also consider that we have three separate amplifiers driving up here, each is targeted to a different frequency range. So each is actually effectively bespoke to the drive unit that it's, that it's working with. Um, so again, it's that integration and tailoring things for exactly what they need to do. Um, the net result of that, certainly on the tweeter, we're about 15 dB lower noise floor than we used to be in our uh, more conventional class AB design. So again, driving down distortion wherever possible. The other thing, as I said, that matters is uh, being able to recreate the sound stage of, of a recording in the room um, without you hearing the room. So at low frequency, that's dealt with with space optimization. At high frequency or higher, mid-band upwards, we need to look at how we interact with the room. So that's really about very careful dispersion design. Now, if your dispersion is designed correctly, such that the sound or the, the tonal balance coming off the speaker is the same in every direction, and essentially the same as it is axially, straightforward from the speaker, the reflected energy off the walls will have the same spectral content as the direct sound. It arrives a little bit later, but the ear kind of ignores that and it just hears it as support, provided it doesn't have a different frequency content to what's coming direct from the speaker, you will not hear it as a reflection. It just provides support. So you add that together with space optimization and with exact uh, correctly locating everything in, in the sound stage, and suddenly all you're left with is the sound stage. You've no longer got your room overlaid on top of what was in the recording. You just have what was in the recording. Um, and it's staggering. You will have heard when you had the demonstration of the speakers that they do this remarkable thing of, of leaving you in the concert hall, but also no matter where you are in the room. Um, I don't want to say there's no sweet spot. It's always best to sit in the middle for a stereo pair, but if you move around the room, you really get the sense of moving around the concert hall. Um, it's that same sense of the band is always fixed where it should be. Instruments, voices just hang in space. There's real depth to the sound stage. Um, it's a, a pretty staggering experience um, what we've managed to achieve here with the, the 360 loudspeaker. There's a number of other areas where we focused on reducing distortion. Um, the electronics module is isolated from the cabinet um, and we spent a lot of time working on that and there's, there's a nice little anecdote in there. When we were uh, trying to measure the effect of the isolation system. One of the methods that we use is sidebar analysis. So we feed a tone through the, through the loudspeaker or through the electronics. We actually drive the speaker separately to produce a lot of energy in the cabinet. Um, but the sidebar analysis, we look at distortion artifacts, at harmonics off from that tone that we're running through the electronics. And we measure that with an audio precision analyzer, which is a very high spec analyzer. 
when we did the first measurements, we were really confused because the, they seemed to be getting really strange results. Um, and it was only when I actually put my hand on the analyzer, I realized the whole analyzer was pulsing from the, the energy from the speaker in the room. The acoustic feedback was getting into the analyzer. So we had to move it, put it in a separate room um, in order to actually get accurate results out of the thing. Interestingly, about 50 years prior to that, this was exactly the experience that Ivor Tiefenbrunn, the founder of the company, the experience with his turntable. Um, so it, there's a great lesson in there. Never forget your past. Um, but yeah, it was uh, fortuitous that we found it. But it's, it's led to um, a big improvement in the isolation design. Again, another saving on distortion. For the speaker as a whole, um, obviously I've spoken about uh, making a speaker that's audibly invisible. We also wanted to create a product that is visibly remarkable. Um, I think to achieve what we have done on a technical level and still have a loudspeaker that looks as, I don't want to say conventional, but certainly as elegant as the form we have here, I think is a remarkable achievement in itself. The dispersion characteristics of the speaker are class leading. They match anything out there on the market, but we've created something that does not look like a final year university science experiment. It looks like something you want in your living room. Um, and that's quite special. Um, in terms of the luxurious finishes that we've got on here, we've, we've got our new Glasgow collection of uh, really, really deep and interesting paint finishes, um, which you can no doubt find on the web, but go to the retailer and check them out in person. It's always, always much better to be able to walk around these things. Um, but also the detailing that we've got on the, uh, the base trims and the array trim up here, all machined from uh, single pieces of aluminium, uh, lots of uh, detailing on there that is redolent of uh, the grooves on a vinyl record and ties in really nicely with our Climax DSM. Lots of features on there that you'll recognise from other Lynn products. Um, but they also serve a functional purpose. We have waveguides that have been carefully designed and machined into the, um, into the array trims as well, again, to, to guarantee that we're getting the dispersion characteristics that we want. So there's a lot, a lot of new technology in here. The cabinet itself is formed from, it's, it's a plywood cabinet, but you can't use conventional plywood. We've got such complex curves on here and, and curves operating in two directions at once. If you use conventional plywood, it just cracks in the press. So we've had to use uh, something that's known as 3D veneer. So normally in a plywood, you have a veneer and another veneer at an angle, another, and you lay up this thing. The 3D veneer, we take each individual sheet of veneer, it's cut into narrow strips and that's stitched back together to make a, a bit like a, a louvered blind to make something that's more flexible. We then build the whole stack out of that and we're able to form this complex cabinet uh, shape using a relatively conventional material. So we've pushed boundaries in, in every part of, of this loudspeaker. But our goal always is to put in all of this effort so that you as a customer just get the best sounding loudspeaker. Really simple to operate. You get a hub, you get a pair of exact link cables or essentially network cables, Cat5, Cat6 cables. Plug it in, load up the crossover and you're away to the races with the best sound that we can provide. My personal involvement with the 360 loudspeaker obviously goes back to the very first um, notion of what we were going to do. It's been a long journey, um, and it's a journey that started before the pandemic, which made it even longer. Um, but every step of it has been, has been an interesting challenge, an exciting challenge. One of the things that you will probably remember, the Climax DSM came out while we were all still in lockdown um, and it was a project that was initiated um, just before COVID really broke out um, and we kept it going through the whole of lockdown because we knew it was going to be an inspirational product not just for customers but for us working on it. It was setting a new benchmark and we had the same with the 360 loudspeaker. Um, so even through all those times and it's taken a long time since mainly due to complexities of the cabinet and things. Um, it's taken a long time since, but really, again, it was that beacon product. It was something that we could come in and be excited about working on. So there's a lot of my vision in here. There's a lot of uh, the electronics team's vision in here. There's a lot of vision from the whole company in here. Um, the, the initial product brief was just to keep the, our existing flagship speaker going. Um, 
we wanted to push the boundaries a bit further. We knew we could do more. Um, so when we presented it to Gilad Tiefenbrunn, our MD, he kind of, he's got enough vision to, to look at it and go, oh, well, he's, he's got a lot of vision to be fair, but he could look at it and see that this was gonna really inform what goes forward um, from this point. So he actually had to, we moved the project out and said, we'll give you an extra year to work on this, um, which meant shuffling a lot of other things around in the business. Um, so we're immensely grateful to, to the business as a whole for allowing us to do this. Um, it's, it's far more than the original brief, but I think, um, it was, it's really worthwhile. It's, it's a special improvement. Ready, Dimi? Oh, hell yeah. Here we go. Wow. In gewisser Maßen kann ich echt vom Glück sprechen, dass ich diese beiden Herren persönlich kennenlernen durfte. Denn so konnte ich ihre Begeisterung auch live erleben und diese ist wirklich eins zu eins wie im Video wiederzuerkennen. Und das ist auch kein Wunder, denn die 360 Lautsprecher von Lin spielen wirklich auf einem High-End Level. Ich wurde von Lin gefragt, wie ich denn die Lautsprecher beschreiben würde. Und ich würde mit einem Wort sagen, akkurat. Ich kann natürlich auch noch ein paar mehr Wörter benutzen, um sie zu beschreiben, wie zum Beispiel Präzision ohne jegliche Störungen. Ich habe sie jetzt in diesem Wohnzimmer gehört und auch in dem Demoraum und in beiden Räumen waren sie nur noch eingemessen. Und ich bin so jemand, der sucht nach Fehlern. Also nicht grundsätzlich und vor allem nicht bei Menschen, aber wenn ich die Aufgabe habe, die Schwächen und die Stärken eines Lautsprechers herauszuarbeiten, dann muss ich auf Fehlersuche gehen. Und ich konnte einfach keine finden. Sie haben mich emotional abgeholt. Der Bass ist präzise und punchig, genauso wie ich es liebe. Der Hochton klar und geschmeidig zugleich. Also klar nicht in dem Sinne von überspitzt erhöht, sodass es irgendwann anstrengend wird, nee. Klar im Sinne von deutlich und fein auflösend. Definitiv langzeittauglich. Und geschmeidig zugleich. Dann noch eine erstaunlich gute räumliche Darstellung. Und ihr müsst euch vorstellen, der Raum war ziemlich groß. Also dieses Wohnzimmer, in dem ich saß, habt ihr wahrscheinlich in den Aufnahmen gesehen. Ich schätze mal so um die 100 Quadratmeter. Es war wirklich ein sehr, sehr großer Raum. Und selbst da klang es unheimlich schön räumlich. Und ich hatte eine interessante Erfahrung vor kurzem, denn eine Woche zuvor war ich in der Schweiz im Klangschloss. Darüber habe ich auch ein Video veröffentlicht, verlinke ich euch mal ganz kurz an der Stelle. Und auf dieser Messe in diesem Klangschloss sind auch, ähm, ist auch, sind auch ein paar Live-Bands aufgetreten. Insofern habe ich in diesem Saal auch Live-Konzerte erleben dürfen. Und da war mir etwas aufgefallen, weil ich da ja selber gefilmt habe, saß ich nicht auf einem Hörplatz, sondern bin ich die ganze Zeit rumgelaufen. In meinem Hintergrund, mal links, in der Mitte, dann rechts, weil ich, wie gesagt, selber gefilmt habe. Und da ist mir Folgendes aufgefallen, dass ich die Bühne, ne, den, die Sängerin in dem Fall, da ist mir das besonders aufgefallen, da war der Pianist rechts, ein Gitarrist links, ähm, Kontrabass im Hintergrund. Und egal, wo ich stand, ob ich in der Mitte gerade stand oder rechts, ich habe die gleiche Bühnendarstellung gehabt. Also ich habe es genauso wahrgenommen, wie sie natürlich auch standen. Denn es ist nämlich nicht so, wenn man im Konzertsaal sitzt oder steht, dass wenn ich jetzt ganz rechts stand, dann stand ich nicht starr da und habe gerade ausgeguckt. Nein, ich habe mich ja dem, der Band zugewendet. 
mit dem Kopf. Und dementsprechend habe ich auch dieses äh, Hörempfinden gehabt. Würde ich natürlich so bleiben, würde, der, würde das ganz anders sich darstellen. Und ich sage euch das deshalb, weil eine Woche danach war ich dann ja in Glasgow und habe mir die 360 Lautsprecher angehört. Und irgendwie habe ich mich an diese Situation zurückerinnert, als ich dann in dem Raum, in dem Wohnzimmer rumgelaufen bin, um festzustellen, wie räumlich spielen eigentlich diese Lautsprecher. Und genau dasselbe Gefühl, wie als ich in der Mitte saß und eben die Lautsprecher gehört habe, genau das gleiche Gefühl hatte ich beim Rumwandern auch. Egal wo ich stand, war die war die Bühne nicht auf einmal versetzt. Also ich habe nicht rechts, das, wenn ich rechts stand, hatte ich nicht das Gefühl, dass ich nur den rechten Lautsprecher höre. Ich hatte noch genau das gleiche Gefühl wie in der Mitte. Genau das gleiche ist vielleicht natürlich etwas übertrieben gesagt, aber ziemlich ähnlich. Und das zeigt für mich, dass sie sehr, sehr räumlich spielen. Also vom ersten Ton an, wie sie gespielt haben, habe ich gemerkt, dass diese Lautsprecher in der Oberliga spielen. Auf der High End in München dieses Jahr hat Lynn diese Lautsprecher auch gespielt. Zum ersten Mal für die Öffentlichkeit, für so viele Menschen. Und dort haben sie auch fantastisch geklungen, trotz schlechter Raumverhältnisse. Und ich war ja auf der High End, ich habe mir auch andere Räume angesehen, angehört. Viele Hersteller haben sich echt Mühe gegeben, die Räume klanglich, akustisch gut zu optimieren. Hat Lynn nicht gemacht, das ist mir erstmal ein bisschen negativ aufgestoßen. Also für mich persönlich, ne, habe ich jetzt nicht breit getreten, aber ich habe für mich gedacht, hm, komisch, Lynn, ne, so ein großer Hersteller und hat überhaupt keine raumakustischen Maßnahmen getroffen. Jetzt im Nachhinein frage ich mich, ob das vielleicht sogar bewusst so gemacht worden ist. Habe ich nicht nachgefragt, um ehrlich zu sein, aber die Lautsprecher haben so fantastisch geklungen, dass ich mir jetzt im Nachhinein denke, vielleicht hat Lynn das wirklich bewusst gemacht, um aufzuzeigen, was diese Lautsprecher drauf haben, trotz schlechter Raumverhältnisse. Mich würde jetzt brennend interessieren, wie diese Lautsprecher bei mir hier im Raum klingen, denn mein Raum ist akustisch ganz gut optimiert. Wie klingen diese Lautsprecher bei mir im Raum und vielleicht auch im Vergleich zu anderen passiven Lautsprechern, die im selben Preissegment spielen, das würde mich echt brennend interessieren und vielleicht habe ich ja irgendwann mal die Chance dazu. Das Design, darauf möchte ich auch noch mal ganz kurz zu sprechen kommen, denn es finde ich wirklich sehr, sehr gelungen. Wenn ich das nötige Budget über hätte, würde ich sie mir wahrscheinlich ins Wohnzimmer stellen. So schick finde ich die. Sowohl die Lynn Heritage Farbe, was halt dieses tiefe, ganz dunkle Blau darstellt, was schon fast schwarz ist. Sehr, sehr edel. Auch das helle Blau, Türkise, nennt sich Kleidbild. Auch wirklich sehr, sehr schick. Und sehr fancy auch die Single Malt Farbe. Blenden wir an der Stelle einfach mal ein. Sieht wirklich auch verdammt gut aus. Wenn ihr diese Lautsprecher mal live sehen möchtet oder erleben möchtet, vielleicht sogar ernsthaftes Interesse habt, dann schaut mal auf der Website von Lin vorbei. Verlinke ich euch auch hier äh, unten in der Videobeschreibung. Schaut mal, welcher euer nächster Lin Fachhändler ist. Kontaktiert ihn, bucht euren Hörtermin. Ihr werdet es nicht bereuen. Habt ihr die Lautsprecher schon mal gehört? vielleicht auf der High End in München oder anderswo, dann schreibt es bitte in die Kommentare und bitte auch eure ehrliche Meinung. Denn ihr müsst euch vorstellen, vielleicht tummeln sich hier ein paar ernsthafte Interessenten rum, die sich das Video gerade anschauen und wirklich ernsthaftes Interesse an den Lautsprechern haben. Und ja, meine Meinung zu den Lautsprechern hilft definitiv weiter, aber es ist nur eine Meinung. Also insofern würde mich das wirklich freuen und das würde den Usern definitiv weiterhelfen, wenn jeder, der sie gehört hat, einfach auch mal kurz seine Meinung hier über die Kommentare beschreibt. Natürlich immer mit Respekt, aber einfach die ehrliche Meinung. Egal, wie auch immer sie ausfällt. Und jetzt noch eine Ankündigung eines bevorstehenden Videos von mir. Denn ich war ja in Glasgow bei Lynn. Ehrlich gesagt nicht, um ein Video über die 360 Lautsprecher zu drehen. Das Video, was ihr gerade gesehen habt, ist tatsächlich aus der Emotion heraus entstanden, ganz spontan. Ich war nämlich ursprünglich dort, um eine Werksbesichtigung zu drehen. Und dieses Video ist im Kasten, wird in ein paar Wochen veröffentlicht, zeigt auf, 
auf welchem Qualitätsniveau Lin Lautsprecher und Elektronik herstellt. Es ist wirklich ein sehr, sehr gelungenes Video. Insofern hoffe ich, ihr verpasst es nicht. Also abonniert bitte meinen Kanal, unterstützt mich in der Form und verpasst nicht dieses Video. Bis bald.